sports junkies, Grant and Danny, Chad Dukes, plus special guests, LaVar Arrington, break down the entire game. It's Misery Monday. Yep, joining us right now on another Misery Monday, former Redskins great linebacker, now part of that other pregame show on CBS, which airs every Sunday, 9 a.m. Eastern. It's London Fletcher. Hey, London. Hey, what's going on? Good morning. So, of course, you made a lot of waves because you called out Coach Hazlitt yesterday. I kind of want to go through some of the comments specifically. I mean, you called him clueless as a defensive coordinator, said he lacks attention to detail, he lacks feel on how to call a game some of the calls you used to call when I was playing head scratching, and you said that you changed the plays. Give us an example of when he was just clueless. Oh, man, there's too many to, to rattle off. I mean, you talk about I spent four years with him. You know, it just through a course of a game where, you know, situation may be, I don't know, third and 20, uh, second and 20 or whatever, and, you know, maybe there's a zero blitz call or some other call that just doesn't um, – really ideally fit the situation and we end up giving up a big play end up uh, at a point scored by the other team and you know next day we're coming in and in, in the meeting room and you know there's lack of accountability it's saying hey man that was a bad call on my part and you know us as players everybody knew this was a bad call but you know instead of just um you know saying i'm being accountable about that you know that's what that wasn't something he did why, why is this all coming out now? And, and I'm EB. I'm the guy that's been killing you on Twitter for the last 24 hours, London. I, I think that, you know, if you have a problem with Jim Hazlitt and he should be replaced, that's fine. I don't, I don't think you'd find five people that would disagree with you. But you went to war with that guy for four years. He protected you when your play fell off. And you have been chomping at the bit to take this guy down ever since you hung it up. I, I honestly believe you've completely changed my opinion of you, London, as a person. I think you have no class. I think you're a phony, and I think you're a backstabber. I'm just completely put off by the way you have attacked Jim Hazlitt personally. I appreciate. I can appreciate your opinion of me as a uh, whatever you you know. People are going to feel however they feel about my statements. For four years, you know, I supported him in personally in inside the building and outside the building. Unlike him with all the players, whether it's players, coaches, where he hasn't done the same thing. And people who know, they're not – they all agree with me. So, you know, you can feel however you want to feel about what I said, but one thing you can't do is say it's not true, and he can't say it's not true. So that's the – Yeah, but can't uh, you handle you it? Best. Go ahead, Lon. I want you to finish. Yeah. So as – it just came to a point where I was watching that coach game, and I saw – continue to see guys running wide open – there's, what, four or five times where well, there's nobody even in the vicinity of uh, a receiver, you know, play after play. You continue to hear the same stuff over and over again. One minute is to, is to change to a 3-4 defense. Next minute is the salary cap. Next minute is injuries. Next minute is Mike Channing. And next minute is this. It's at one point, at what point in time do you say, you know what, it's me. I need to do better. So, for the from the same point, you know, some of these free agents that you brought in, that Shen, uh, that Hazlitt, you know, recommended. I've called some of the guys, draft picks that he played a major part in. One minute he's their guy, next minute he's he's bashing them, you know, behind the behind closed doors. And you know, you look at what he did with Mike Shanahan. As soon as he got out the door, what was he saying? While he was in the building, and once he got outside the building. But why is it so personal, though? Why didn't you bring these points up when you were playing for him? And particularly in your last season, when your play clearly fell off by all accounts, and all Jim Hazlitt did was stand up for you. Again, if Jim Hazlitt needs a change of scenery, needs to play some coach somewhere else, that's fine. Most people agree with you, but it's the way you did it. It's the way you attacked his son yesterday when all his son did was protect and, and stand up for his father. That's what rubs people the wrong way. You could easily say in a classy way, you know what? I think his time has, has run out there in D.C. and he needs a new change of scenery. Something like that would have been much more respectable as a Redskin that we all honored and love to watch play. Yeah, you're probably right. I probably could have did that, but I decided to go at it a different manner and actually point out why I felt that way, not just state state an opinion, but I decided to back it up with facts. So, you know, that's what I chose to do. So are you saying, London, that Jim Hazlitt's a bad guy? Yeah. He's a bad what guy. What I said is what I said. And, again, 
He's unbelievable. I'll give you an example. When we first came to the uh, career team, this was about four years ago, five years ago, I guess now, this during the offseason, I, I received an unsolicited phone call from somebody I respect very, uh, very well. He, he asked me about uh, Coach Hazel, and I was like, you know, um, asked me what I thought of him. I was like, you know, I think he's pretty cool. You know, all right. And we were in the offseason. First thing he got his mouth, he said, watch him. He's a snake. Uh-huh. So I was kind of taken aback from that, and I decided to watch him for four years. And I'll tell you exactly what it is. And it turned out to be true where I would see him or hear him, you know, talk bad about a player, talk bad about a coach. But then in the next, you know, couple minutes later, he's buddy, buddy with these guys. And, and that's happened repeatedly. And there is nobody who can dispute that. People in, in – the, the, the response that I've gotten from people, you know, within the organization or who've dealt with him has been, man, you're 100% right. So, But that's just you, petty again, stuff. Again, you can, Why would bring you that out? It, that's just petty behind-the-scenes kind of thing. Why would you bring that up? You're because above it's that. it's the truth. But I want him to be it, above that. You're supposed to be a Hall of Fame linebacker. He's speaking the truth. Yeah, but can't you be above it? Why do you have to go down to that level, London? You're right. You're probably, you're probably right. I, I you know what? I decided I didn't want to handle it that way. So I decided to handle it the way he's handled his uh, NFL career, where he's, you know, jumped and stabbed people in the back. You look, let's go back to when Mike Shanahan left the building. What did you hear uh, Jim Hazlitt do in his interview? He blamed Mike Shanahan he blamed for Mike Shanahan. the defensive now, problems. Let's, now, let's ask, now let's ask, let me ask you a question. Who hired Jim Hazlitt? Mike Shanahan. So why would he disrespect the man who hired him like that. Same thing with Scott Linehan. I read an article on Sunday from uh, Jim Thomas, and he mentioned how Jim Hazlitt didn't um, care much about Scott Hans- Linehan. Mm-hmm. Who, who, hired, who hired Jim Hazlitt in St. Louis? I'm guessing it was Scott Linehan. So you talked to me about kind of stuff behind closed doors. So Did he when ever- this guy, when he decides to respect the authority that and the people and show a little bit of consideration – of people who hired him to do a job, and yet you're constantly backstabbing these people any opportunity you got, whether it's in New Orleans, it's in St. Louis, it's in Washington, wherever the case may be. I have people who who aren't even in the building come to me and, and tell me about comments that this guy's made about well, you- um, stuff that, stuff in Washington. So. I mean, really, should we continue to keep it behind closed well, doors? Did, did he? Only, get, thing I did, only thing I did was address the white elephant that's in the building. So. <laughs> did he ever criticize you privately as a player when you were there, like in meeting rooms? That because there's obviously something personal there, and you're giving no, examples. He, no, he not he not criticized me privately. I don't. I mean, we don't. I don't mind being coached. Hey, we all make <clears> mistakes or, or whatever. We all can play better, coach better, whatever the case may be. It was just a situation. Well, I felt like he was a bad coach. That's that's one thing. I've I've had good coaches, bad coaches, whatever the case may be. And I don't, you know, you just deal with them all the same, and and that's that's what it is. But as far as I just don't like the way he handled situations behind closed doors, behind people's backs, repeatedly. Joined by London Fletcher. To- former Washington Redskins analyst for CBS Sports Networks, that other pregame show. Were there other of your teammates that had grumblings about Hazlitt, or were you, you know, the, the most vocal guy about what you thought were his shortcomings? Yeah, absolutely. But I'm going to stick – I mean, guys aren't dumb. You know, guys aren't dumb. People in the – when you get to the National Football League, one thing you understand is football, and you understand – when you when a guy knows what he's doing and when he got when a guy doesn't, one thing I try to do is try to make sure. Hey, let's just make make this work the best way we can. You know, there will be calls that come in and guys would be like, man, change that call, man, or look at me like, hey, man, just play the call, man. <laughs> you know, this is this is on several occasions. So, you know, it's a it's definitely was a conversation. But, you know, London, when you the, say he didn't uh, pay attention to detail. Can you kind of explain that further? Did you feel he wasn't prepared and doing the work? No, he he puts in hours. That's not you know NFL coaches they put in a ton of hours. But it's one thing to come up there and present some information. Hey, this is what we're gonna do. This is what they do. But it's a it's the small things that lead to big things. You know when you see guys running wide open, when you see the same route that the Indianapolis Colts beat you on 
was saying about the Minnesota Vikings beat you on, the Carolina Panthers beat us on for an 82-yard play a couple years ago. And, and this has happened week in and week out. So, you know, instead of addressing, hey, the fine points of this scheme, whether it's, hey, you got to carry, this is your leverage you need to play with, this is where, you, where your eyes need to be, this is where your coverage responsibility is, this is the weakness of that play, you know, just all different things like that. You know, that's what I mean by attention to detail. London, why didn't you bring this up again? Oh, I your, did. I and, did. I no, did. publicly. Did. Why didn't you bring it up public? Did you bring it up with management? Why didn't you tell Dan? Why didn't you tell whoever the GM was at the time? Bruce, I don't because, know. Because Jim Hassel was a defense coordinator. I go to him first. I don't need to go. To, I didn't. I wasn't going to do like him and go behind his back and bring this up. When you re-signed with the team, why'd you re-sign with them in twelve? If you thought you were coach, if you were going to play for an incompetent coach, I, I really thought hard about it. But then they paid me eleven million dollars. So, <laughs> no, eleven million you know dollars, big reason. I can understand yeah, no, that. <laughs> no, but you know what? Actually, the way I looked at it, hmm. I looked at more of a what I had established in, in Washington. I like playing for Coach Shanahan. I was I believe in what we were going to achieve. You know, um, we had got Griffin in the draft. He um, and we ended up winning division titles. So, you know, that was a uh, so me coming back helped the. Uh, but you, you did know, it for money. You, you did it for money, though. You, no, you I put didn't do it for money. You did. You I, did. I, did. I, I was I was joking. I was joking with that one. I did, I was uh, I just wanted to be a little funny guy right there. London, so, since you spoke the truth yesterday, I want to hear your truth on some of the players and some of the situations <laughs> right now. It appears to all of us as fans, we're not in the locker room, that RG3 isn't that liked by the teammates. They don't believe in him. What was your experience with him? I love Robert. I had great experience with him. I sat next to him for, for two years, and, you know, it, it baffles me the way this stuff is coming out about him now because, you know, um, he's he was well-liked, and, you know, I thought it was going to be totally different when uh, when Gruden got there and, you know, it would be a fresh, uh, fresh start for everybody. and. You know, obviously he got injured and, you know, didn't play play uh, up to up to standard, but I think they gave up on him too soon. You know, you got a guy who you spent a lot of uh, draft picks on. Why not ride him out this year and see see if he can can develop and be that guy? I knew when you uh, – what after he got taken apart in, in, uh, in the press conference, he wasn't going to go out and have a good game against San Francisco because he had no confidence. Now, you're a defensive guy. You weren't in the meetings, but some – you know, there were some leaks – that he wasn't a guy, clearly he does the work to get back on the field and he works hard at rehabbing and he probably works hard in the gym, but there are some leaks that he didn't put in the work in the film room and things like that. What did you hear about RG3? That was, that was shocking too because, you know, I would get over there and Robert would be in the building from, I don't know, early to late and, you know, six in the morning to whatever, I don't know, five, whatever, six o'clock. So, we're in, we're not in the quarterback meeting room, so I don't know how much he was in that meeting room. But he was in the building, so as far as the quarterback not putting in the work, I don't I couldn't see the imagine that. And you know, for for a guy as intelligent as he is, I don't I couldn't see. I don't I don't think he didn't he did not know the playbook. So you know, there's always something you can fine tune from a technique standpoint and things like that. All right, London, as we're starting to talk about next season because they're three and ten, and we're just kind of looking ahead. <clears throat> Who do you think are the keepers on this defense? Clearly, Ryan Kerrigan is one of the better players. Uh, Sean yeah, Breeland yeah. has emerged. Who, who who are the keepers on this defense? We got some good young talent, so you continue to build around them. Keenan, Keenan uh, Robinson has played some great football. Um, I like Amerson. I like the way he can run. You know, a big physical guy. You know, just continue to coach him up. Um, get the you know get D'Angelo back and you know let him continue to be a mentor to those young guys in the secondary. You know they'll 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 um, be some more playmakers. Um, you know obviously Murphy will be he'll get uh get better as he uh, gets gets more experience. And there's you know uh, Hatcher has made plays and stuff like that. So there there's some guys that you can you can build around on that defense. You think of Perry another as well. Perry Riley as well. You think if another coordinator was in there instead of Jim Hazlitt that they'd be performing better? Yeah, yeah. Do you think Hazlitt will be let go? Uh. I'm not sure. You know, Jay Jay likes him. I mean, Jay's a you know he coached for for him in the UFL, and he'll uh, he may keep him. I don't know. He said he's going to evaluate everything and everyone once the season is over with. And if that's the case, you know, I don't see how you can evaluate him and say, all right, man, he's a keeper. But 
again, it's up to it's up to Jay to, to determine that. That's not um, you know, I don't have I'm not privy to that. London Jim Haslett's been a coach in the NFL for twenty plus years. If he's let go by the Redskins, there'll probably be at least a couple teams interested in him. If he's such a bad coach and such a bad leader of men, why are other teams? Why would other teams still be interested in him when he leaves DC? Well, that's just how the NFL works. It's a, it's a, you know, that type of network where you know, good old boy network in a sense where, you know, people where you have relationships around the league and. You know, you could say, hey, my buddy's here. They hire you. I mean, just the way it is. It's, just because you're in the NFL doesn't mean you're a great coach. I've I've had great coaches or better coaches on um, the high school level and uh, collegiate level than some of some of the coaches I've, you know, been a part of in the National Football League. And that's that's just the way it is. Just don't don't get um, mis- don't misunderstand just because somebody's in the NFL as a coach that they're a great coach. That's not the case. And, and and one thing about uh, – I'll give you an example of all of you, – you can look at my defensive coordinators that I've had. You know, I had defensive coordinators. One, we won in St. Louis. Um, Peter Junta and uh, John Bunny were co-coordinators. We won the Super Bowl there. Lovey Smith was our defensive coordinator. We went to a Super Bowl with, with him. I went to uh, Buffalo. We had number two ranked defense several times with, with Jerry Gray. He was an excellent defensive coordinator. Um, Perry Fuel was my defensive coordinator. He ended up winning the Super Bowl championship with uh, with the Giants. Dick LeBeau had came to uh, Buffalo for a year and was an assistant head coach. And Dick LeBeau was a, a brilliant defensive mind who won several Super Bowls with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Greg Williams has won Super Bowls when I was winning. Uh, you know, he won with the Saints. He's my coordinator in Buffalo in uh, Washington. And Greg Bloss, who was a, a guy who was very demanding, held everybody accountable, who got the most out of us when I was in Washington. So I, I've had some excellent defensive coordinators, and not one of them. Have you ever heard me say anything negative about any of those guys? London, every defensive coordinator you played for on every level, where does Hazlitt rank? I'm talking like Pee Wee, Pee Wee, all After this conversation, do we really need to? Is he the <laughs> absolute he worst? The he's, he's, he's not, really he's not London, his biggest London, fan. London, where do you? Next. <laughs> Wow, man. Where do you – next time – yeah, he does. He next time you oh, see – next time you come in contact with Jim, because you're in that same circle, what's that interaction going to be like? Or will you say this to his face? Yeah, if he has a problem. Jim knows my number. My number hasn't changed, man. It's been the same for, I don't know, last eight, did nine you, years. Did you treat him with this same lack of respect in the building for four years? No, I treated him with respect. So and why change he now? I wish he, he would have showed the same respect to – to everybody else. Why? So, well, why, should, why change I'm now? Speak, I'm speaking up for the for all the players and the coaches that he's uh he's done. Like so you're saying last, what you're saying is the Jim the, the Jim Hazlitt that steps to the podium is a way different Jim Hazlitt than walks yeah. around the yeah. the offices yeah. of FedEx yeah. of FedEx yeah. and well, Redskins yeah. Park. I'd say that yeah. the, the London yeah. Fletcher that steps to the podium is a way different <laughs> London Fletcher too. All right, Th- does anybody else have any questions London, for London? Th- London, thank you for the time, buddy. All right, guys. All right. That other pregame show you can watch nine o'clock on CBS. I, I wish I could tell you. You, you, you. I know. I know. Let I me tell you something. We, My phone is blowing up with stories about from London. guys, and I just I don't even think it's fair for me to bring them up. So I didn't. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's just the tip of the iceberg with this guy. So in my London opinion. might be different than he's portrayed as. There's a lot of people who believe that. Safe though. to say he has a scorched earth policy with Jim right, Haslett. For whatever, look, whatever it is, they the way, he doesn't like him. He played for some great defensive coordinators. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he went through his career like, all oh, those guys are Hall of Famers. Can I also just be clear? I'm not arguing with the sentiment that Jim Haslett needs to go, potentially. That's fine. I'm not a Jim Haslett defender. Yeah, I, we don't. I'm, we don't. I, no, no, but some people don't. They're like, oh, well, he speaks the truth. That's fine. If he needs to go, he needs to move on. Maybe he's overmatched. Maybe the game's passed. I don't know any of that. That's fine. It's the way he handles it. He even admitted he could have handled it better. He admitted it several times. He called out Jim Hazlitt for being a bad coordinator. At the heart of what he said, I bring it to three things. He basically said, A, Jim Hazlitt is no good. B, his play calls were terrible. And C, Jim Hazlitt was a backstabber. Those yeah. may all be yeah, I mean, true, I think, I think whether the reason, or not he handled it properly. I think the reason he came out and said all those things is because he disrespects him as a guy. Not right. He's played for bad coaches. He didn't call all those bad coaches out. He called one guy he out. He doesn't respect him as a man. He doesn't like the guy. But you know what? We should respect London Fletcher calling London into the Fletcher show. As a man. You, don't, 
you don't respect him, but he did call into the show and he knew what he was. He knew he was coming into this. <laughs> yeah, he knew he knew exactly that he was going to be facing a bit of a firing squad. So we want to hear from you. Give us your take on that. 800-636-1067, one of the great Redskins of all time. Middle linebacker London Fletcher calls out his defensive coordinator. Said basically he's unprepared, doesn't pay attention to detail, had to change the play calls. What do you think of London Fletcher now? 800-636-1067. From the Winter Classic 